Welcome to this video in which we show how to find shear and moment diagrams when you have a beam that has both distributed and concentrated forces loading it. So you can see that we have a beam here and uh, we have a distributed force uh, along the length of the beam that is uh, uh, creating a thousand pounds per foot upward and then we have two concentrated forces, the two 8,000 pound forces that are going downwards. And so our goal is to figure out what the shear diagram looks like and then integrate the shear diagram to find the moment diagram. So that's where we're headed. Um, to begin with, uh, we note that with this distributed force, we can define a weight function, w of x, where x would start off here at 0 and would be 16 feet over here. w of x will be minus 1,000 pounds. So the idea, oh, I'm sorry, 1,000 pounds per foot. So the idea is that um, the distributed part of the load is represented by this weight function and this weight function is um, positive downwards so that's why we've got the minus 1,000 pounds per foot there. Now to find V of X if we didn't have the discrete or the concentrated forces we would just integrate uh, Omega of X and that would give us uh, V of X but because of the discrete forces we have to be a little careful and so what we have to do is look at several different regions. We have to look at a region um, between 0 and 2 feet. That's uh, the region before this 8,000 pound load. And then we'll look at a value where x falls, or, or we'll look at uh, when x falls between uh, 2 feet and 14 feet. And then at 14 feet where the other 8,000 pound force is, we have to be a little careful. So let's start here. Uh, between 0 or x between 0 and 2 feet we have that v of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of minus w of x prime dx prime and when I work this out I find that this is just um, this is uh, 1000 uh, whoops, pounds per foot times x. Okay, so that one was pretty easy. Now we have to look pretty carefully at what happens uh, between, um, or what happens at two feet. Uh, imagine if we're just to the left of two feet, so we're right over here, then we can talk about v of 2 minus. And what I mean by 2 minus is something that's just to the left of 2 feet. It's not quite there. And so to get that I would plug in um, 2 into x and I would get 2,000 pounds. Okay. Now when I think about v of 2 plus, okay, so I've gone from just to the left to just to the right of 2. In going from just to the left to just to the right of 2, I've added this 8,000 pound force going downwards. Okay, and so what I would have then is I would have my 2,000 pounds that I had at 2 minus. This is um, this V of 2 minus is basically due to this distributed force. And then when I go to the right of 2, I've got the 2,000 pounds minus the 8,000 pounds. Okay, which means that uh, V of 2 on the right side of 2 will be minus 6,000 pounds. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, again, the idea is that this, uh, this concentrated force downwards uh, changes from a, or, or changes this from a nice continuous curve 
to a curve that has discontinuities at the um, at the force. So now if we um, look then at x between 2 feet and 14 feet, so basically we're looking at a value of x here, um, v of x will be v of 2 plus plus the integral from 2 to x of minus w of x prime dx prime. Okay, v of 2 plus we already know and this integral here, the integral from uh, 2 to x of minus w of x prime, this guy here will just become uh, 1,000 pounds per foot times x minus 2 feet. And so uh, when, I, uh, when I add these two guys together, uh, this 6,000 or minus 6,000 pounds and this expression here from the integral, I'll have that v of x is equal to minus 8,000 pounds plus 1,000 pounds per foot times x. Okay, so this basically tells us what happens uh, between uh, 2 feet and 14 feet. Okay, at 14 feet, I've got another big jump because at 14 feet, I've got this 8,000 pound force going down. So again, what I'll do is I'll think of V of 14 feet minus this is um, going to be minus 8,000 pounds plus 1,000 uh, pounds per foot times 14 feet. And when I work this out, this I believe gives me um, 6,000 pounds. Okay, now in going from just to the left of 14, which is 14 minus, to just to the right of 14, which is 14 plus, I have um, the 6,000 pounds that I have just to the left of 14 minus 8,000, minus that force that is concentrated at 14. So I'll have uh, 6,000 minus 8,000, which will be minus 2,000 pounds. Okay, and now I can look at the case where x is between 14 and 16. We'll have v of x be equal to v of 14 feet plus plus the integral from 14 feet to x of 1,000 pounds per foot dx prime. Okay, v of 14 feet plus is uh, minus 2,000 pounds. So this guy here is v of 14 feet plus, and then this integral is uh, 1,000 pounds per foot, x minus 14 feet. Okay, and so, um, when I add these two guys together, 
I get that this is equal to minus 2,000 pounds plus 1,000 pounds per foot times x minus 14,000 pounds. And this gives me then minus 16,000 pounds plus 1,000 pounds per foot times x. So there you have it. We now have v. And uh, if we go and look at the plot of v, it looks like this. Okay. So you can see that I have that everywhere except at 2 and at 14, I have basically just a slope, a positive slope of 1,000 pounds per foot. And again, this positive slope of 1,000 pounds per foot is due to the, that's due to the distributed component of the load on the beam. And then at 2 feet, and again at 14 feet, uh, my V of X is dropped by 8,000 uh, pounds. So I have a drop here of 8,000 pounds and a drop here of 8,000 pounds. And again, those drops are due to the discrete or the um, concentrated 8,000 pound loads on the beam. So basically that gives us the uh, shear force diagram as a function of x. So it looks like we're out of time. We'll have to get the bending moment diagram uh, by integrating the shear force diagram in uh, part two of this video. So hope to see you then.